So this is my guide for selling books on Amazon FBA. We're going to walk you through it from start to finish. So if you look in the description below, there is a link to general condition guidelines and for books. Click on that, familiarize yourself with the different conditions. Um, after you familiarized yourself with those conditions, I want you to take all of your books and separate them in piles according to those conditions. So you're going to have good all the way from acceptable to like new, right? In different areas in your house, in front of you. So I know that that's a huge pain in the butt. I know that's going to take a while. So pause the video and go do that right now. I'm going to be here waiting for you. Trust me when I tell you, if you do this, it's going to speed up the process. It's going to speed it up dramatically. So go do that. Go do it right now. I'll be right here. <laughs> okay. Now that you've familiarized yourself with those conditions um, that Amazon has in place, I want you to open up a text document and write in conditional notes for each step set. So obviously nothing's going to be new in the box. I, this is just some things that I put together. Write your own. I mean, come up with with uh, your own conditional note depending on how you've gotten them stacked. So I have one that says book is in like new condition, crisp pages, no notation or highlights, clean cover, stored in a protective poly bag, eligible for super saver shipping, fast Amazon shipping plus hassle free return policy means your satisfaction is guaranteed. Tracking provided with your account and every order. Okay, so I have one um, conditional note or description for each type of condition. So as I'm going through these, I'm just going to be able to copy and paste over and over again, and it'll sort of streamline the process. So you now have your books separated according to condition, and we have an entire thing written out for each type of condition, right? Uh, pause the video now and write out your conditional notes for each subset, if that makes any sense. Again, I'm going to be here waiting for you. I'm not going anywhere. Just hit the pause button and go do that. All right, go. Awesome. So now that you have everything in order of condition, start with, I would start with the newest one first. So grab a book, come on over to amazon.com, type in the UPC here. You can get those little scanners to speed up the process. It's really not necessary in the beginning. Just type in the UPC and pull up the book. Now, what we're going to do is first check out used. We gotta find out what we're gonna price it for, right? So we're gonna look under used. You are FBA. You're not Merchant Fulfilled. Merchant Fulfilled doesn't matter. So we're only going to look at FBA. And we are going to look at your condition. So if you're acceptable, obviously you're going to be down here, right? I would list it for like a hundred bucks probably and try to get rid Actually, for this one, I would list right under 137 for acceptable condition. If you were in good condition, your price would be somewhere around here. Another thing I want to do is take a quick peek and see how fast this thing is selling. And the reason I'm looking at the speed in which it sells is that gives me an idea of how I'm going to price because if it sells slower, then obviously I'm going to be the next person out. If it sells faster, I don't necessarily have to be the next used one out to still sell it in a decent time frame. So I've come over to Camel, 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 and I'm seeing a lot of sales activity. Each spike is an indication of sales activity. I did a video about this. If you want to watch it, the link is right there. Ta-da! That's to the other video. Cool. All right. So you want to know if, if this thing is moving. Obviously, this is moving. So we're going to come back over here. Knowing full well that this book sells quickly, I'm going to price it a little bit more expensive. Um, mine's in good condition. So I'm going to try for about 150 and That's what we're going to do. So I'll go back to product information now that I know what I'm going to charge for it and I'm going to click on sell on Amazon. If this button isn't here, sometimes it's not here, go into seller central, go to inventory and click on add product. You would then type in your UPC right here and it'll show up. I'll show you. UPC or ASIN will work. You can even type in the title. But just to show you, sometimes that sell it now button isn't here, and boom, there it is. Sell yours. So this is how you would do it if you didn't have that button. So we're going to go in here and type in our conditional notes. For this one, it's actually in better than good condition, but I always try to um, 
deliver more than what's expected. So this particular book will fall in to this category. Book is in a good condition, no notation or highlight, stored in protective poly bag, eligible for blah, 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 blah. Now we're going to go in order. So the next one, all I'm going to do, actually I've already copied it, so I just paste in the conditional note. And this part is really what takes the most time, is sitting there going through the book and finding out what's wrong with it and what's not. But we've already gotten that out of the way, and we're going to streamline this process. So I don't care that the next out is $82 plus $4 shipping. This is merchant fulfilled. It's not relevant. I've determined that the book sells really fast, so I'm not going to be the next out. And we're going to price it at $149.99. And since I paid a dollar for it, it, it seems appropriate that I charge $150 because that's what you want to do. Okay, continue. Oh, bottom. Let me go back. Bloop. So the bottom here is the one I want to select. I want Amazon to ship and provide customer service for this item if it sells. We're not merchant fulfilled, we're FBA. So click the one underneath, then click continue. Boom. All right, then we're gonna submit the listing and create shipment. All right, Amazon, taking a little bit of time. Come on. I'm glad I spent $150 a month for high-speed internet. There it is. Okay, so we're going to continue with the shipping plan. I personally, with expensive books, I polybag them in a poly bag. There's links in the description below to these things if you'd like to jump over and get a good deal on those. Um, and I also label them. So, we have one unit. I'm going to put units one. We're going to continue. I'm going to continue again. Now, here's where you print your labels. If you have a Dymo printer, print them here. If you don't have a Dymo printer, it's okay. You don't need one, especially starting off with FBA. You really don't want to spend a lot of money. You can do this just with a regular printer. And if that's the case, skip this step. And later on, I'll bring that up. So, you're just simply going to hit print labels for this page. Um, I'll open it with Adobe Reader. There's the thing. Printer is the Dymo. I don't know why it sets it up like that, but it does. And we're just going to hit print. Boop. Cool. So now we got our label. We're going to hit continue again. Validating shipping plan. So you can add it to a pre existing plan, and after you've got one, right now all my shipments are out, I think. Or you can create a new one. For this one, I'm just going to create a new one because I, I don't have one to combine it to. And as you go through and you do new stuff, so you go to the next book and go through this process again, you would click down here to add to an existing plan and you want to find one that says working, not shipped. And, and a lot of times, um, Amazon will split up different shipments, but you're still going to get a lot in each one. So try to condense as much as possible, but for this one, I'm just going to do a new shipment. Okay, so this shipment ID right here is important. I'm going to t now take a box. You're probably going to need a lot of boxes. You're probably going to have at least three or four shipments if you have a decent load of uh, books. But take your box and somehow put this on there. Okay? Um, I normally just print it out on the Dymo and then put the label on there, but you can write it out on the box. So you have that written on the box and you're going to do that for each shipment as they come up. Occasionally Amazon will make you create a new shipment where you can't add it to the old one. When that happens, open up a new box, tape the bottom, and put that shipment ID on top of it. Now after you've gotten everything together, it's going to look something like this. So I put it in a poly bag because it's an expensive book. You don't have to do it. That's something that I do. My label goes on there, and then I have a suffocation label also that gets placed on the poly bag. And then at this stage, I'm done. I'm just going to take this book and put it into that box with that shipment ID on it. And everything else that goes with that shipment ID 
will also go into that box. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Make sure you put a suffocation label on there. I'm going to put a link in the description to suffocation labels if you do not have them already. Amazon requires it. If you don't put it on there, they're going to charge you and they're going to put it on there because buyers will open up your book and then they'll have the poly bag and they'll say, oh, let me put this on my head and then they may die. So the label is saving people's lives and it's very important that you put the label on the bag. So that's what you do. Awesome. Cool. Now we're going to go to the next one. Let me find. And so I have to show you at least two books for this to make sense because we're combining books into similar shipments. Okay, so this one, you're going to find the book by typing in the UPC here, or you will go to Amazon Seller Central um, Inventory Add Product and find it that way if you don't have the option to sell it here. I'm going to peek at the other conditions. And the other prices, just like I did before, I don't care if they're merchant filled since we are FBA. We are sorry. Oh, that's good that you're sorry because I'm the only FBA seller. I'm not sorry. All you people are merchant fulfilled? Yep, all of you are merchant fulfilled, so I'm way up there. I think I could probably get like at least 50 bucks for it. Let's look at new. I want to make sure that there's no new books in FBA for like 30 ah Amazon Amazon you did it you're stealing my sale all right I want to find out how much they have in stock before I can make a decision let's go up here I'm gonna see how many see if they got like a bazillion in stock or not where are you how many do you have you have a thousand of them? You're a bunch of jerks. Fine. Fine. All right, I'm not selling this for 30 bucks. So this is going to be a $20 book. Unfortunately, it's going to be a $20 book. See, why would anybody in the right mind... you got to pay attention to this stuff. Why would somebody pay $29... $28, if you know how to do math, for a book or more when they can get it brand new from Amazon for $30.29. Obviously, people aren't going to do that, and they have a huge stock amount, so I need to make this appealing. We're going to save people 10 bucks. and yes, I have one to sell. So check the new and the used as you're going through. I should have mentioned that in the first one. So again, this is in good condition. I'm just going to copy and paste. Um, the previous conditional notes that I used because we have all of our books in order um, in order of, of their condition to make our lives easier, right? Blue. Cool. And this one's going to be 1995 because Amazon's being a bully. Alright, I want Amazon to ship and provide customer service for this item if it sells. Continue. We're going to submit the shipment. Back to the high-speed internet. Come on. You can do it. All right, we have, we're gonna continue the shipping plan. <coughs> I have one unit, because it's one used book. We're going to continue. I'm gonna apply the labels again. If you have a Dymo, you would do it from here. If you have a regular printer, we'll get to that in a minute. And there's our label. Continue. Now at this stage, you want to cross your fingers and hope that it's going to a warehouse that's close by that already exists. And this is the one right here, this one, that we put that other book in. This, I should have put in that, but I didn't. So we're going to go to this one and add it to this shipment and hit continue. Now after you do this a thousand times, your you'll, things will start to get a little confusing and your eyes will start to cross and you'll go a little crazy. So you just look at this shipping ID right here and you look at your boxes and you say, okay, which one's 20 HP? You only really need the last four digits when you're putting this on the box. And you look at 20 HP and put the shipment in the box. Again, I do poly bags. You don't have to do poly bags. I already went over this. We'll do it again. Label, 
suffocation label so your customers don't die. And if you do not have a Dymo printer, you're going to go to Inventory, Manage FBA Shipments. This is something you're going to do at the end after you've indexed them all. So don't polybag them yet so you know what's what. You're going to click on Work on Shipment. Review and Modify Units. You are then going to come down here and click on Print Shipping Labels for this page. You want a decent amount on there. That'll work. 24 and up, 66 by 35. Print labels for this page. We're going to open with Adobe Reader. And it's going to look like this. So it'll fit on a full sheet of paper. And you're just simply going to go and print that with your regular printer. Um, when it prints out, just cut them out, take a piece of tape, and stick them on there. It's a lot cheaper than a Dymo printer and starting off you probably don't want to spend $50 to $100 on a, a label printer and this will work just fine until you've you've accumulated enough profit to purchase um, toys that will that will make that process faster. Boom! In the box. Now after you've put a shipment together after you've done this and you have you probably have two or three boxes that are full of stuff we are going to go to manage FBA shipments and from here, from here we'll select the shipment that we want to work on. And what we need is box labels. I'm always going to do Amazon Partner Shipping Carrier because they get huge discounts on shipping. Like I can literally ship, if, here I'll show you right here. Where's this one going to? South Carolina? Yeah, this should be cheap. So the most your box is supposed to weigh is 50 pounds. Sometimes you can get away with it if it's a little heavier. Stick with 50 pounds. If in the shipment there's more than 50 pounds of books, you would do one box that's 50 pounds. Click here, add another box, and then this one will be however much it is. Um, you're obviously going to need a larger shipping scale. I remember when I first started doing it, I used the bathroom scale. Um, I guess it was accurate because I didn't have any problems. I just rounded up the weight in pounds, and that worked for me. Uh, if you're interested in a shipping scale, there's a link in the description in my pants below down there okay so you're gonna measure the dimensions of the box and then from there you just hit calculate and this will give you an idea how cheap it is look it's 10 bucks for a 50 pound box I don't know how much it weighs I haven't weighed it yet but then I would agree to the terms of service accept charges and then we would print the label down here and the label would print out and then I would Bajow, pop it right on the box and it's good to go. Ready to go to the FBA center and, and that's pretty much it guys. So you just need to just stay organized and keep going through the process until you have you know a decent amount put together and here's a quick thing that I like to do. Go to ups.com. I just put the stuff out front. I don't drive it there because I don't personally like to carry hundreds of pounds of boxes and take them to UPS. So what I will do is log into my UPS account. You can create one, it doesn't cost anything. And this is the option that you want to do. This is a cheap way to get it get it done. So I would go to schedule a pickup right here. It is package or letter. Yes, I printed my own labels. We would go to continue and the option that I use is request a UPS smart pickup. It's cheaper than a regular one. So you just click on that. Ciao. Yes, I have labels. That's my address. I'm not going to fill that out because I don't want the world to know where I live. UPS ground. Front door. And I would write, you know, second stairwell to the left, and then we would click on next. It cost about six bucks. It's probably going to yell at me. No, it's done. Six dollars and five cents for a pickup. Doesn't matter if it's one box or ten boxes. Six bucks, the guy will pull up and take it off your porch. You don't even need to leave your house. This is what I like to do, um, so I'm not running around town with FBA boxes. But yeah, that's the process. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to watch this. I hope that it was helpful. I hope that you are now able to take your books and send them into FBA and make lots and lots and lots and lots of money um, after watching this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit like if you like the video. 
Um, comment if you want to comment. Don't comment if you don't want to comment. And check me out on Facebook, too. There's a link in the description below to my Facebook page. Hit the like button there, and you can get videos in your Facebook timeline. Thank you, thank you. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.